Okay, so we were just talking about how the total benefit measures the most someone would be willing to pay to get six, since that's the quantity we're talking about, six units of this product. And again, it comes from adding up the marginal benefit, which are each point on the demand curve. So the total area under the demand curve here tells us the total benefit, how much you'd be willing to pay for six units of the product. And that was $60. And we calculated that by adding the consumer surplus triangle to the total revenue, which is how much we have to pay. So what is consumer surplus? It's the difference between the $60 that you would be willing to pay at most to get six units. It's the difference between that and how much you have to pay six times eight or $48. It's the $12 that's sort of left over that you would have been willing to give up, but you didn't have to. So it's a measure of well-being or how well off the consumer is. You know, if, you, if there's an amount you would have been willing to pay, but you don't have to, that's a good thing for you, right? Somebody could have gotten that money out of you, but they didn't. So that's the best way to interpret consumer surplus. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this $48 and we're going to think about it from the perspective of the seller of the product. So this blue rectangle, this blue $48 down here at the bottom, what happens to that? Well, that's money that the seller gets to put in the cash register, but then what happens to it? Well, in your economics classes, you are taught that, let me choose a different color here, okay, kind of purple, that the supply curve is the same as marginal costs. So MC. What is a marginal cost? Well, the word marginal just means additional. And what this line, the supply curve, tells us is that for the first unit, it will cost about $3 to produce that unit, just that first one. And for just that second one, it costs us an additional $4 to produce the second one. Now, these marginal costs, what kind of things will we be spending that money on? We call those variable costs because those are the kinds of costs that you need to spend more money on when you produce more units. So these variable costs for the first unit might be labor and materials. The we need more labor and more materials to produce the second unit, $4 worth, and then $5 worth, etc. And so if we add up all the area under the marginal cost, under the supply curve, then we get what are called the variable costs. And so let me outline all the area under the supply curve here as variable cost. Now, this shape, this purple shape, is not a triangle and it's not a rectangle. So we could calculate the area if we wanted to directly. Let's go ahead and do it and then I'll show you an easier way by dividing that shape into two parts. A bottom rectangle, which we can calculate easily, and then an upper triangle. And we can add those two together. So let's do that. Uh, this bottom rectangle is 2 high times 6 wide, and so that's 12. And the upper triangle, 1 half times the base is 6, and the height is also 6 in this case. So 1 half times 6 times 6, that triangular part is 18. Right, one half times six times six, so 18. So if we add the 12 and the 18, the variable costs, or what we call this, the labor and materials costs to the producer uh, will be 30 here. So let me scratch out that marginal cost there, and, and let's call this variable costs equals uh, 30, right? Now, Keep in mind, this is an important thing to remember, that this 30 in variable costs for labor and materials is part of that $48 in total revenue. See, the blue rectangle is $48, and this variable cost is part of that, 30. Now, in order to calculate what's left over on the top, 
Let me see if I can find another color here. Okay, we'll go for orange. Uh, this top part we don't really have to calculate because we know if the bottom part here is 30 and the total blue rectangle is 48, how much has to be left over? Well, it has to be 18 because we're breaking it into two parts. Now, another way we can get this uh, upper part is just to recognize that that is a triangle. And so we can, let me outline this upper triangle here in orange. This upper triangular part. We can calculate if we wanted to as just being one half times. Uh, we can consider this part up here the base, which is six, and that the height, which is six, which uh, is a similar to this triangular part down here, same size, and so it is 18. And this part is the money that's left over after a business pays its variable costs. So picture it this way. The total revenue is 48. And what does the business do with the 48? Well, they pay $30 of it in variable costs. And then they have $18 left over after they pay their variable costs, labor and materials costs. We call the $18 they have left over producer's surplus, PS. It's not profit. Why is it not profit? Well. Because a business does not only have these variable costs uh, of labor and materials, they also have fixed costs. A fixed cost is a cost that does not increase when you produce more or sell more of your good. What kinds of costs might those be? Well, there are a lot of examples, but I'd like you to just keep in mind one classic easy one to understand right now, which is rent say you rent a store or you rent a factory or you're paying interest on money that you borrowed uh, to buy or rent the machines then rent is a classic fixed cost that you also have to pay so out of this forty eight dollars in revenue you pay your variable costs labor and materials and then you have eighteen dollars left over to pay fixed costs and if you have any money left over after you pay your fixed costs then you have a profit. So producers surplus is money that is used to pay fixed costs and if you have any money left over that's profit. So this is the basic analysis of um, supply and demand where we have consumer surplus, producer surplus, variable costs, total benefit, and total revenue. Now what we'll do in the next part of this lecture is let the government get involved and not allow us to get to this equilibrium point. Uh, but before I end, there is one last uh, concept that I need to introduce, and that is the concept of total surplus. And it's uh, kind of straightforward. I almost forgot it, but total surplus is equal to the producer surplus, which is a good thing for producers, plus the consumer surplus, which is a good thing for producers. So if we add those two together, the $12 in consumer surplus and the $18 in producer surplus, we get $30 in total surplus. Now, even though I almost forgot, let me tell you that this is the most important thing that economists keep their eye on. We don't care so much whether the consumers get more surplus than producers or producers get more than consumers what we care about is that the total amount of surplus is as big as possible and that happens when we're at this equilibrium point here let's also visualize where that total surplus is it's the yellow triangle plus the orange triangle and if we outline that this is what the total surplus looks like and we can actually verify that the total surplus is 30 with one half times base times height of this black triangle and you'll get the same 30.